called the post the postnatal the postnatal care for pregnant women that will be the focus on the show uh, today and to go through this uh, do justice to today's conversation is none other than a matron matron Angela uh, Wallisa uh, yes he's the matron at um, Clearview Fertility uh, Clinic so, um, in Lecky Lecky first one uh, time uh, matron Angela what exactly is uh, postnatal care? Postnatal care is the care that we give to delivered mothers is the care given to them immediately after the delivery of the placenta and then it extends up to six weeks after delivery yes so this care can actually be given by health professionals it can also be given by even loved ones around the delivered mom oh, because yeah there are a whole lot of things involved in postnatal care so it's not just the healthcare professionals doing the whole job you did say um should run for uh, six weeks after delivery. Six weeks after delivery, yes. Why, why six weeks? Why not less or why not more than six weeks? Okay, so um, there's something called, in medicine, there's something called, um, the, okay, let me use a layman's term now. The uterus after delivery needs to go back to its, uh, original, proper, position. To its original position and size. So that period of involution in, in medicine, we call it involution. That period of involution medically takes between six to eight weeks. That's for the woman, for, for the, the mother, woman, for yes, the mother. For the mother. Yes. Okay. So during this period, the woman is still under. She still needs to be observed. She still needs medical attention. She's not like I said. She's not completely out of the woods. Mm. Okay. So that's why it extends to six weeks. Fantastic. Um, uh, let's look at this one. It says, uh, why is postnatal care important to the mother and the child? You just mentioned, you just talked about the mother right now, yeah. the need for uh, for some things to return to normalcy. Yeah. And in, so what about me, what about the child? Yeah, apart from the, the mom, the child too, the general well-being of the child also uh, plays a very vital role in this because if a woman doesn't attend postnatal care classes, if she doesn't know what to expect oh, there is, there is postnatal care well, classes of course there is there is we inculcate all of this though in the, at, in, the prenatal at the prenatal natal, okay. yes we do that and then some of them too they also come back even after delivery when we have classes they come back because they have a whole lot of questions especially first time moms yes. they have a whole lot of questions okay so for the child if a mom is not well informed about what to expect after delivery this child ends up being deficient of a whole lot of things. Wow. Yes, if a child is not properly breastfed, if a child's cord stump, after delivery there's something called the cord stump that the child comes out with from the umbilical cord. Now, if that cord stump is not well taken care of by the mom, the child ends up having an infection. The cord stump, that is like... Um, the, it's attached to, to the, the placenta. To, it's, it's, yes, from the placenta. placenta to the navel of, of the, the child, the child. Like yeah it's often been cut off it's cut off okay during the, the delivery. delivery it's cut off so what is left on the child's navel is called a, a stump a cord stump all right so during postnatal care classes we tell the mothers that okay this is what to expect this is how to take care of the cord stump now if you don't do that a child can come back with infection mm. and then there are other things too you look out for in a child that is also being taught in postnatal care classes like um, during the hospitalization after delivery, like three days after delivery, we run a test called the serum delivery check where we check for jaundice. Mm. Now, if for instance a mother delivers and then she just leaves the hospital thinking that okay, all is well, maybe just after 24 hours after delivery and leaves, and this child comes back with jaundice, it's a problem for the child. Jaundice can also be fatal. So all of these things are Jaundice taught. seem to be like the most common common and child I mean child I mean child child birth and uh, uh, issues. Yes. You always hear about jaundice, jaundice, jaundice and all of that. Yes, yes. But, but why then, is why is it so? What what could make a child uh, you know come up with jaundice after birth? Every child, every newborn child tends to come out with um, a tinge of jaundice. The reason is the liver of a newborn is not mature enough to do the, the kind of job it is expected to do. Now, what we call it in medicine is conjugating bilirubin. 
okay <laughs> that's that's a bit that's why i said what is expected to yeah, do good. it doesn't do it at delivery mm. okay so but for some ch it varies the level now varies after delivery but the only way you can check you can't just you, you can't speculate you can't just say okay this child has joined just yes. by looking yes. now the child needs to undergo an investigation a blood test yes, yes. okay so when we do that blood test it tells us exactly the level of the jaundice mm. in the child and then it now helps us know what how to intervene mm. okay it's given by professionals it's also given by loved ones yes. now loved ones could be a mother yes. be a mother so those are the love love these are the <laughs> yeah the but, but the, care from, no no from no but mothers. that one medically no no that one is not it's not even part of it at all it's not beneficial to either the child or even the mom Fantastic. okay when a child is born the head is already molded to the shape it's gonna take okay now if for instance a child comes out due to one delivery complication there's something we call a caput in medicine mm. now a caput is formed in a child's head if a child if there is an obstructed label a child a child is ready to come out but then the the vagina the cervix where the child is going to come out from is not just opening enough and the child's head is just stuck there mm. now when that child is um, eventually delivered you will see the shape of the head long the back okay. of the head will be long like this okay yeah. now whether the the mother-in-law or the mom uses hot water or not it will still go back to its normal shape after some days well, okay naturally yes. naturally it will go back to its normal shape after some days okay so they are just i don't know they do that they they twist the arms and yeah, the legs they twist the vertebral column, they... it doesn't it doesn't uh, honestly a, a, a newborn baby has been formed already when the child is born so whether you do those things or not it's it's All really right. not necessary All right. fantastic and also angela uh, of that so let's look at what the composition of a postnatal care uh, could be like give us take us to the process okay uh postnatal care basically is composed of the um, counseling and health education mm. that's the basics okay so and then in addition to that the vital signs and then some investigations like um, the full blood count and maybe a urinalysis these these are the things that make up the postnatal care now the health education in the sense that the the knowledge impact into the month on what to expect yes. when to draw a line mm -hmm. when to call for medical attention when to actually take the child to the hospital what and what you are to look out for okay and then health education also on the norms the normal things you are you are meant to do at home for instance breastfeeding okay if a mom in a first time mom gives birth she needs to be taught about breastfeeding positioning how you're going to sit when you're when you're breastfeeding how the child is going to suck how the child is going to be positioned all of that now this is very important these things are very important because like for breastfeeding if it's not properly done the woman could come down with what we call breast engorgement and she could even be readmitted to the hospital for that okay then for the babies there's something called the colic pain mm. Colic pain is, for instance, in the middle of the night, a child just starts crying, you know, and you've, you've fed this child, you've changed the, the child, the, the diaper is not wet, it's not, you know, and this child is just crying from, for, for, not, for nothing. Now, if you were in the postnatal class, you'll be told that there's something from two weeks and above, there's something called a colic pain that every newborn experiences. Some mothers... So our mothers will tell you, okay, I used this, I used that, mm. medications. But medically, there is no drug for colic pain. The child outgrows colic pain. Okay? So so these are the things, these are these are the basic things that postnatal care are composed of. Fantastic. Like, what, are the other, what other reasons do you think can send um, a mother back to the hospital? Okay. Um, when I started initially, I said, after delivery, a woman is not completely out of the woods mm. there are some things that it may not have happened when she was pregnant and she could just come down with certain things after delivery all right um, uh, uh metro we have a false color oh, okay. hello good evening i'm sure um, um metro you heard the question yes i did yeah, so thank you. you so much for that question okay yes this is actually a common practice 
whether a woman gives birth vaginally or not you see women tying uh, wrappers on their tummy to do whatever to make it go back to mm. the uh, to a flat position but then really it doesn't it doesn't work honestly it doesn't what the only thing that will help uh, the the uterus because like i said it takes six to eight weeks for the uterus to go back to its um former position seemingly original six, position yes original position and when during pregnancy the uterus is enlarged and when a baby comes out it takes that long for it to go back now imagine tying something above a uterus that hasn't gone back it's like you're forcefully trying to make that uterus go back when it has its own time hmm. you know it's a gradual process okay and then for a woman that has gone through cesarean section i won't advise a woman that has gone through cesarean section to do that to hmm. practice that the reason is there is a surgical site there that yeah. needs to be healed yes. and then healing processes differs it varies in individuals i may heal faster than someone else okay so it's 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 really very so you watch yourself and then if you feel that okay i think i i am okay if, if you if you weigh your pain threshold on a scale of one to ten and you feel you're you're doing better than before after some weeks not days old mm. after some weeks after you must have gone for your postnatal checkup at six weeks and everything is fine now you can now start doing exercises not using wrapper not tying wrapper exercises yes is what will actually just help to make the abdominal walls firmer because after delivery the abdominal walls are no longer as firm as they used to be they are now flabby they now become loose you know but like, with like, exercises like we say we say we say, we say in physics they've uh, they've, they've exceeded their elastic limit elastic limit thank yeah, you they've exceeded, <laughs> they've exceeded so but with exercise it could help to kind of like bring it back but not it's not it doesn't work like magic it takes dedication it takes a whole lot of time for that to happen not by tiny rubber in line with uh, uh, the caller's question okay. why do we see uh, very few african women you know very few african women seem to achieve uh, what seem like a a return to normalcy of the of the stomach as a guess when you see um, um european women european women yes how, how, what could be the difference in um, in, a, in approach? Okay, um, one of the things I think could uh, contribute to that is there is this um, there is this thing we have here as Africans that when you deliver after delivery, you believe ah a whole lot of thing has come a lot a whole lot of things have come out of me. I need to replenish. I need to get my strength back so and all thing. that wrong dieting you know and someone you 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 can hear someone telling you I'm, I'm, please i'm eating for two when she's not pregnant and you ask okay what do you mean you're eating for two i'm breastfeeding baby is taking everything from mm, me mm. but someone who is not an african even during pregnancy and she if she's eating just a, a small bowl of rice after delivery she takes the same quantity the same quantity so honestly our dieting after delivery here it's not it's not just it so, so that, i think that's that, that, that's a major that should also be incorporated into the, the postnatal care <laughs> conversation yes yes we, we talk about all of these things you know we talk about diet we talk about exercise we encourage women to even do exercise those that had their babies through cesarean sections they start their own exercises later than yeah. those that After had the the vagina. Of, of yes healed, yeah. your stitches need to be healed completely you need to be fine because you know the the cutting was not just on the outside but from inside so you need, need to heal completely At all layers yes you need to heal completely before you engage in exercise yes let's let's open the line so good evening what's your name and where are you calling from <laughs> I am hoping that we can hear you. This is not good. This is not good. I'm sorry. Would you just try and call us back as quickly as you can before we... Um, no, so you want to respond to The that. process of involution of the uterus is natural. So whether you take hot water or you take cold water, involution is still going to take place. Mm. 
okay so taking hot water is not is not harmful to the uterus you could do that but then i assure you you are not contributing anything positive so whether you take hot water or not the evolution process is still gonna take place, place yes. uh, so you just uh, we just making the nonsense of all the myths uh, that we we, no, we knew just all, all the while fantastic and just to let you